What's up, YouTube? This is Big Mike. This is going to be a response video to Carcino. Carcino, of course, in the video, I think it was yesterday, or the day before yesterday, where he was saying um, that he believes that Grant Hill was a better player than Scottie Pippen. And um, I had a couple people say they didn't want to hear my response to that. I mean, Carcino, of course, is never going to acknowledge anybody else other than than channels as big as him or larger. Uh, that's what happens sometimes in, in, you know, on YouTube. You know, People look at subscribers as if it's some type of um, currency or wealth or status or whatever. I'll always be the same whether I have one subscriber or 100,000. But anyway, <clears throat> and if you think that's a diss, whatever. I don't give a shit. But anyway, here's my um, take on this, right? You got to understand that Carcino is a Piston fan. It's the same guy that says that Isaiah Thomas is not only better than Michael Jordan, but that he's the greatest basketball player of all time. And Grant Hill was a Piston. So you have to be suspicious as to whether he's being objective or whether he's being a fan. All right? He also, to me, doesn't give a lot of he gives a lot of opinion and not a lot of there's nothing wrong with opinion but he doesn't give a lot of facts to back up his opinion all right now this is what i will say the disparity the the not disparity the differences between their careers grant hill and scotty pippen is not as big as some people would like to believe even some chicago bulls fans uh, as a matter of fact, Grant Hill came into the NBA as a much better player than Scottie Pippen came to the NBA. All right, Scottie Pippen was never on the same level as Grant Hill as far as being a college player. All right, this is a guy, Scottie Pippen, who was traded to the Chicago Bulls in the '87 draft for Olden Polonies. Scottie Pippen was not a highly touted player. Grant Hill was a highly touted player. Um, Grant Hill was a sensational player with Duke. All right? He was the ACC Player of the Year. His number 33 is retired by Duke. You know, he was a two-time NCAA champion. He was the one that that gave that full-court pass to Christian Leitner for the shot. All right. Um, Grant Hill was that guy. Also, you know, he was the uh, – I hadn't even known this. He was the NABC Defensive Player of the Year. Now, Grant Hill wasn't terribly noted for his defense in the NBA, um, at least especially. He wasn't a bad defender, but I do remember – uh, in his later years, when he regained his health with the Phoenix Suns, with the Clippers, he was by the time he was with the Clippers, he was done. But when he was with the Phoenix Suns, when he was a, a role player, I do remember him shutting down some guys. So sometimes he doesn't get enough credit for his defense. But Grant Hill came to the NBA barnstorming. I mean, he came to the NBA uh, 1995 season. Averaging 19.9 points, 6.4 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.8 steals. Shot 47.7% from the floor and was a 73% foul shooter. Now, one of the knocks, oh yeah, and he was co-rookie of the year with Jason Kidd. Now, one of the knocks on Grant Hill for a, a good duration of his career was that he was not a good outside shooter. Uh... He became a little bit better toward the last year or so of his Pistons career with three-pointers. But he didn't become he, – he improved tremendously by the time he was with the Clippers. Then he could hit that shot more cons – uh, not, not the Clippers, excuse me, the Suns. He could hit that shot a lot more consistently by then. But that was one knock on him. But, like I said, he was NBA ready. Um, if you weren't – at least a kid or a teenager in the 90s, then you won't really relate to this. But 
96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, especially 97, Grant Hill was that guy, okay? Grant Hill was the guy. Grant Hill was the person who, before Kobe Bryant, was seen as the heir apparent. He had uh, variations of different player games. He was sometimes referred to as a mixture of Mike and Magic, you know, which I thought was a little bit much, and I thought it was a little bit disrespectful. I still remember that Slam magazine from '97. I think it said something like, "Grant Hill, just like Mike, only better," and that ruffled a lot of people's feathers. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like it because I mean I'm I'm a Bulls fan, you know, and also during the '97 All Star Game, Grant Hill garnered more votes than anybody in history. And he got even more votes than Michael Jordan. And um, I think because of that, that might have sparked some drive in Michael to approach the 97 All-Star game as more of a point forward, even though he was a shooting guard. He, that's, he, that's, that was a year he... Uh, well, I shouldn't say point forward because he's not a forward. He he was more of a facilitator in that game, and that's why he became the first player to uh, have a triple double in the All Star game. And I think that was a motivating factor because he was like, okay, so he does this better. Let me show you. Let me show you what I used to do with the Bulls before. I could do it all, you know. But going back to Grand Hill, um. Grant Hill had a better peak, in my opinion, okay? Um, there was a f- five- or six-year stretch where Grant Hill looked like he was destined to be a top 20 all-time player, I'd say. He was on that trajectory. Um, but what happened with Grant Hill was the foot injury, if I remember correctly. Uh, He had his best year in 99-2000 with the Detroit Pistons. He averaged a career-high 25.8 points per game that year. Um, But if I remember correctly, yeah, 25.8 points, 6.6 rebounds, 5.2 assists, 1.4 steals, shot 49% from the floor, had a decent year shooting from the three, thirty-five percent, and nearly eighty percent from the foul line. But if I remember correctly, during the playoffs, I can't remember who the opponent was, but during the playoffs, Grant Hill had injured his foot, and he, and he um, <clears throat> he played on it. A little bit reminiscent of Kevin McHale, and he played on that foot, but I think. I remember correctly. I'm, I'm kind of going off memory with this one, okay? So I might be wrong, but that was the year, the off season, that I believe that Grant Hill was a free agent, and I think he wanted more money, and I think he wanted more money than the Pistons were able to pay him because at that particular time he was an A-list player, and the big talk at that time was that. It was going to be the super team because the Orlando Magic, who were five years removed from the NBA Finals, uh, Shaq had left four years earlier earlier to go to the Phoenix, the uh, LA Lakers, excuse me. Penny Hardaway, like I said, had fallen off. I think they had just shifted Hardaway to Phoenix. They had landed both Grand Hill. And Tracy McGrady. It was going to be this twosome that the NBA was like Pippen and Jordan. That's what that's what the, 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 everybody was saying. This is going to be new Pippen and Jordan. They're going to win five, six, maybe even more NBA championships. This is going to be a new dynasty. This is going to be a team that's going to rival and surpass the LA Lakers. Then Grant Hill had his injuries. As a matter of fact, during the next six seasons, Grant Hill would miss 300 
and 57 games. The next six years, listen to me, 357 games, including the entire 2003-04 NBA season. And he nearly died of a staph infection. And it was really heartbreaking to watch because this guy would work so hard to come back from these surgeries and injuries, to get back on the court. And just when he was starting to get back into the swing of things, he would, he would have another injury or another setback, and he'd have to have surgery again. And, 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 and I'm amazed at the will <clears throat> and determination of Grant Hill that he didn't retire. That's the drive that he had to keep playing. And after every surgery and after every setback, his skills and physical ability diminished. And by the time he regained his health somewhat with the Phoenix Suns, well, I think he had one last year with Orlando, and then he was uh, either dealt or signs, I think he was signed as a free agent with, I think he signed as a free agent with the Phoenix Suns, I can't remember. But he was no longer an A-list or even a B-list player. He was a role player. But he redefined himself. And he regained his health, miraculously, all the way up until his last year with the Clippers when he was done. And um, he still had a remarkable career, if you look at it, okay? Um, wrote down some stuff, okay? Uh, wait a minute. Grant Hill played in, despite the fact that he missed so many games, uh, he played in 1,026 games. He averaged 16.7 points per game, 6 rebounds per game, 4.1 assists per game, 1.2 steals per game. Shot 48.3% from the floor, 31.4% from three-point range, and shot 76.9% from the foul line. He was a seven-time All-Star, a five-time All-NBA uh, first-team player. And like I said earlier, he was a 1994-95 co Rookie of the Year winner. And um, five times he was considered for the MVP award. Um, I think that the closest he probably came to the award may have been 99-2000. But five times he was on the ballot in consideration for an MVP award. Um he was a member of the 1996 Olympics, and um, he had uh, not his win shares, career win shares, 99.9, which is 80th all time, and he scored 17,137 uh, career points. Now, <clears throat> when he went down with that first injury after 2000, right? in the year 2000. He was 27 years old and already was a five-time all-star. And he was only 27 years old. So you have to take into account what his career would have been had he never been injured. I think personally that he would have been just, he would have been marginally worse than LeBron but he'd been a surefire Hall of Famer, and he definitely would have been better than Scottie Pippen. But that's a lot of ifs. Because in comparison, in comparison, Scottie Pippen had a relatively healthy career. And this is what, in my opinion, edges out Scottie Pippen over Grant Hill. Scottie Pippen scored 18,940 career points. Three times he was an All-NBA first team. Two times on the All-NBA second team. Twice the All-NBA third team. Eight times he was uh, a member of the NBA All-Defensive team. And these were real defensive teams. Not that fake shit Kobe was on toward the end of his career. One time he was... Uh, two times, excuse me, he was an All-NBA second team. Now... 
the eight times that Pippen was a member of the All Defensive First Team, that was seven consecutive years, 1991, I believe, to 1998. He played 1,178 games, averaged 16.1 points per game, 6.4 rebounds per game, 5.2 assists per game, two steals per game, shot 47.3% from the floor. So he, so Grant Hill was a little bit more accurate from the field, though Scotty took more three-pointers. Uh, Scotty was a really bad three-point shooter at the beginning of his career, but he developed to become one of the better. He was never a marksman, like, say, a Chuck Person or a Reggie Miller, but he could hit you. He could, he could uh, hit you up from downtown if he got hot. Uh, I remember Scotty loved to – he was – Probably one of the first guys I saw, Scotty Pippen, to take advantage of the fast break and, and pull up. He used to love to get the ball, uh, get the defensive rebound, go up court, and pull up at that um, right at that line, you know, right behind that line, and, and, and shoot that uh, three with that. Really awkward release that he had. What well, not awkward, but that odd little release that he had. Uh, he was thirty two point six, thirty two point six uh, career uh, three point shooter. Shot seventy point four percent from the foul line. He was never a great free throw shooter, and uh, I think that's most likely because he had large hands, um, and maybe a little bit of mechanics because Michael Jordan had large hands and he shot. Uh, about 84% from the foul line. So, I don't know. Scotty just, the, that was the one thing about Scotty Pippen that used to irritate me as a player was it's, it's inconsistencies from the foul line. Like, this has 70% for his career, right? But there were games when Scotty looked like Shaq shooting foul shots. He would have a game shooting 8 of 10, but then he'd have another game where he would 2 of 7 from, down, uh, from the foul line. You know what I'm saying? Um, he had 125.1 career win shares, which is 37th all time. 67.3 defensive win shares, which is 16th all time. Seven time NBA All Star, 1994 All Star MVP. Six times he was in consideration for the MVP award. Uh, and he came the closest in 93 94. Had it not been for Akeem Olajuwon and David Robinson. Two top twenty all time players with Elijah one top ten all time player. If it wasn't for those guys, I think Scotty Pippen would have won the MVP award in nineteen ninety four. All right. In 1994-95, Scotty Pippen led the NBA in steals with a two point nine per game average. And of course he's a six time NBA champion. He was a USA basketball male athlete of the year in nineteen ninety six. And um Scotty Pippen's 2,307 career steals uh, is six all-time, and he was a member of the Dream Team in 92, and, of course, a member of the 96 Dream Team 2 in Atlanta. And I think when you look at Scotty Pippen's overall career, his resume, he's better than Grant Hill. Okay, his resume is better. If you're a guy that looks for peak for peak, then you might say Grant Hill. Uh, but Grant Hill's peak was very short when you think about it. I mean, what was his peak? 96 to 2000? There was a four-year window where Grant Hill was, you know, arguably the best all-around player in the league. And I'm not saying the best player because I think the best player at the time was still Michael Jordan. But Pippen was considered, if you look at the, the total, the totality of the 1990s, he was the best small forward in the league. And there was always an argument between the two who was better. Um, I think another thing that separates the two is defense. Like I said, Grant Hill was a decent defender. Uh, and at times he could be a very good defender. Scottie Pippen is an all-time great defensive player. In fact, many people feel that Scottie Pippen is the greatest defensive small forward in NBA history, and I have no argument with that one. Uh, I, I think of so many different games 
where Scottie Pippen put his signature on ball games with defense. I always think of the 1997 NBA Finals Game 6 and how that series was won. A lot of people think of Michael Jordan in 98 with a shot over Byron Russell, but I think of 97 oftentimes too. Where I believe was Carl Malone was trying was it Carl Malone trying to inbound the ball, and Scottie Pippen diving for the ball and, and and knocking it. Well, actually, Tony Kukos deflected it slightly, the trajectory of the pass. Then Scottie Pippen uh, tipped the ball. He dove, tipped the ball to Tony Kukos. Tony Kukos, of course, uh, had a breakaway dunk. And sealed the 90-86 win. I always think of things like that with Scottie Pippen. The things that you, that don't get picked up in statistics and stats. You know, Scottie Pippen just would change the trajectory of the game with his defense. The way that he shut down, helped to shut down Magic Johnson in the 91 uh, finals. Although I do think that Ma Michael Jordan was doing a good job too. When Scottie Pippen got on Magic, he really disrupted Magic's uh, ability to see the floor as well as he normally does. Um, I just think of so many different games that Michael and Magic, uh, excuse me, Scotty and Michael won with their defense. I think of the, the 1997 Eastern Conference Finals with the Heat and how the Bulls looked so horrible offensively at times, but it was the Bulls' defense which was spearheaded by Michael and Scotty. And while the numbers peak for peak might suggest Grant Hill, when it comes to crunch time, when it comes to fourth quarter, I just have to go with Scotty. I mean, if I'm trying to win championships, um, I, I, I paraphrase a little bit from what Robert Ory said about the Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan uh, comparison. If I'm trying to fill seats, then I get a guy like Grant Hill. But if I'm trying to win, if I'm trying to win championships, I'm going with Scottie Pippen because I can just think of so many different times when Scotty won games with his defense. I mean, just so many times when Scottie Pippen has just, you know, shut people down defensively. Um, and also, Scottie Pippen was one of the best uh, outside of Michael. I'm talking about in the 90s. Outside of Michael and Dominique Wilkins, I'm trying to think of a Kemp, uh, trying to think of other players that are a little bit better. Yeah, outside of those three, Pippen was the best in-game dunker of that era. Outside of Michael, Dominique. And Sean Kemp. I mean, <laughs> Pippen had some nasty dunks, man. Some nasty dunks. I remember a game where uh, Pippen dunked on, I think it was the game Michael had 55 against the Knicks. I think Pippen dunked on, um, who was that that he dunked on? Man? I can't remember anymore. Was it Charles Smith? It might have been Charles Smith. But, of course, Pippen had that memorable dunk on Patrick Ewing, man. And that dunk was just nasty, man. Now, now Grant Hill had some 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 dunks. I remember he dunked on Mark Matumbo, and that was an amazing dunk. But Scottie Pippen would just have these ferocious, like, just throwdowns on people, man. But in conclusion, I think that if you're looking at peak for peak, a person might come to the conclusion that maybe it was Grant Hill. But if, I think if you're looking at the entire career, the, both their careers, and you look at what each one of them did, and you look at their resumes, I think you have to go with Scottie Pippen. But tell me what you guys think.